Hey, this is Mrs. Gooding. Welcome to I Flip for Math MathCast, Lesson 3-2, Mental Math Using Multiplication. Our quote today is by John Dewey. We only think when confronted with a problem. So in order to make sure that you do lots of thinking and get lots of good math brain exercise, I'm going to make sure that you have lots of problems this year. Our learning goal is to use mental math to make multiplication easier. Here are our individual lesson learning goals. First of all, I'm going to teach you how to multiply by multiples of 10, 100, and 1,000. It's going to be really fun and really easy. You'll enjoy this lesson. You're also going to use the multiplication properties again tonight to make multiplication easier. Here is our vocabulary. First of all, a product is the answer to a multiplication problem. Remember, in 5 times 7 equals 35, 35 is the product. Factors are numbers you multiply together to get a product. So, in the equation, 5 times 7 is 35. 5 and 7 are factors of 35. Multiples is a new vocabulary term tonight. A multiple is a number that is the product of a given number and another number. Let me show you what I mean. We're going to look for the multiples of 5. If we take the number 5, which is our given number, and we multiply it by any other number, we'll start with 1, we get 5. So 5 is a multiple of 5. With any number, whatever number is the given number, that is the, also the lowest multiple you will ever have. So the lowest multiple of 7 would be 7. The lowest multiple of 333 would be 333. Here's our second set of factors. 5 times 2, that's another number, equals 10. So 10 is a multiple of 5 as well. And in our third example, 5 times 3 is 15. You can see that I've actually increased the other numbers just by 1. 1, 2, and 3 if you look at all of those green numbers. And my multiples are increasing by 5 each time too. 5, 10, 15. If I wanted to list more multiples of 5, I would just count by 5s. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I could go on forever with multiples. There is no end to the amount of multiples a number might have. I remember this by thinking that the word multiples begins with an M. M also begins the word more. So multiples are always that number, that given number, and more. Never less. You'll never have a multiple that's less than the given number. Here are our strategies for using mental math. First of all, you underline all of the non-zero digits in both factors. So in the equation 70 times 60, you multiply the 7 and the 6 because they both have value. They're not zeros. Next, you multiply those underlying digits. So 7 times 6 equals 42. Then you count the zeros in both factors. There's a 0 in 70 and a 0 in 60, so there are two zeros in all. Now write the amount of zeros after the product of the underlying digits. So 70 times 60 equals 4,200. I have a feeling I'm going to be doing some push-ups tomorrow, but I'm not going to tell you why. Let's do an example now. We're going to use both the multiplication properties and mental math to make working this problem a lot easier. I don't know what 50 times 32 is, and I don't know what 32 times 2 is, but I can move these factors around to make multiplying them together a lot easier. If I move them around, that means I'm using the commutative property. So I know that I can multiply 50 times 2 pretty easily. So I'm going to write that first. See how my numbers are in a different order now? They're all the same numbers. I've just written them in a different order. 
Now I'm going to use the associative property to make sure that I'm multiplying 50 times 2, which equals 100. When I'm done multiplying a number that's in parentheses, I like to cross it off. That reminds me that I'm not going to be using either of those numbers anymore. What I'm left with is the multiplication symbol and the number 32, so I bring those down. Now I can use my mental math strategies to make that easier. I underline the 1 and the 32, my non-zero digits. 1 times 32 is 32. Now I count my zeros. There are no zeros in this factor, but there are two zeros in this factor. So I add two zeros after my 32. So my answer is 3,200. Now it's your turn to practice using mental math. Write down the answer to 20 times 50 times 7. You might be able to do this in your head, but for right now, let's keep track of what we're doing by writing it down. Go ahead and pause and push play when you're ready. Did you write 7,000? Let's see how we did that. There are different ways that I could solve this problem. I'm going to use the way that's easiest for me, but maybe there's a different way that's easier for you. You should use the properties that make it easiest for you. When I look at these numbers, I can multiply 50 times 7 together pretty easily using mental math. But the answer to that is a little trickier to multiply by 20. I can do it, it's just trickier. But if I multiply 20 times 50 together first, I can use my mental math strategies pretty easily. Underlining my non-zero digits, 2 times 5 is 10. I'm going to underline both of those numbers because that's the product of 2 times 5. It's not one of my zeros from counting my zeros up afterward, and I don't want to get it mixed up with that. I'm going to ask you to do the same thing. Underline that entire product so you don't get those zeros mixed up easy either. After I'm done doing that, I count the zeros in both of my factors. There's one here and one here. So I add two zeros, one, two, after that 10. Do you see how easy it could be to make a mistake there? That's why I underlined my original product. Now I've multiplied 20 times 50. So I bring down the numbers that are left, the multiplication symbol and the 7. Now, I can either erase this number and only underline the 1 and the 7, or I can just leave my products there. Do I know what 7 times 10 is? Yeah, it's 70. Now I'm going to count the zeros that are left. 1, 2 and I have 7,000. That would be my answer. If that confused you, you could also go back, as I said, and erase that line right there. Let me show you what I mean. It's the same thing, there's just more than one way to do it. This time, I'll just underline the one and the seven. One times seven is seven. Now I count my zeros that are left. One, two, three. One, two, three. See, my answer is exactly the same. I just used a different strategy to find it. Whichever way you use is absolutely okay. Just check it carefully and underline the correct amount of digits each time. Now write down the answer to 4 times 33 times 25. This one looks tougher because it doesn't have any zeros in it, but it's really not. Pause and then push play when you have it written down. Did you write 3,300? Let me show you how I worked that out. As I'm looking at this problem, I'm thinking what multiplication properties could make this easier? 4 times 33 is not a number that I want to multiply in my head. Neither is 33 times 25. No way. But I can multiply 4 times 25 in my head pretty easily, and that actually gives me an answer of 100. So I'm going to use the commutative property to change the order of my numbers, to move them around. And I'm going to use the associative property to group the 25 with that 4. 
4 times 25 is 100. Now I bring down the numbers that are left, multiplied by 33. Now I just use my mental math strategies. Underline the non-zero digits. 1 times 33 is 33. Now I count my zeros. There are no zeros in this factor, but there are two zeros in this factor. So I add two zeros after my 33. So my answer is 3,300. That's a funny box, but you get the idea. Write down the answer to 120 times 2,000. Remember to use your properties and your mental math strategies to make this easier. Pause and push play when you're ready. Did you write 240,000? Let's see how we got that one. 120 times 2,000. This isn't too bad. There's only two factors there. So I'll use my mental math strategies and underline my non-zero digits. 12 times 2 is 24. Then I'll count the zeros on both factors. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 240,000. Are you ready to challenge yourself tonight? Here it is. It takes Isaac 10 minutes to ride his bike down the hill from school and 20 minutes to ride up the hill from school. He attends school Monday through Friday. How many minutes does he spend biking to and from school in two weeks? Just so you know, there's more than one way to solve this problem, so think about it, be creative, use the properties and your mental math strategies to make it easier. Explain how you got your answer in your journal. Explaining your answer makes you a more thoughtful mathematician. Good luck, come in and check your work tomorrow. Finishing up, go ahead and review your learning goals. Have you mastered all of them? Are you at a level one where you have no clue what we're talking about and you need some serious help tomorrow? That's what I'm there for, that's my job. Are you at a level two where you're getting them right most of the time but you're still struggling sometimes? Or are you at a level three? You've got it, you had fun doing the challenge problem and you're excited to move on in multiplication. Write down any questions you still have Congratulations, you finished Lesson 3-2, Mental Math Using Multiplication. See you tomorrow.